How to achieve white in watercolors when you have no white paint. When you're down and you stare at your window, hoping that you'll come up with some words to say. Welcome to my channel. I'm Elisa, the artist behind Elisa Laporte Art. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to use whites in watercolor by using resists and preserving them. We don't often use white paint in watercolors, though some have, it's not very common as watercolors is translucent and transparent and it has a luminance that most other paints do not have. For this reason, we're going to talk about how to achieve white in watercolors. We will be using a resist and I will show you how to preserve them by painting around them, among other techniques. In this sense, watercolors can be a challenge. Most artists, especially when coming from oils or acrylics, can be hard to transition because you are not able to use white paint. You are trying to use the white of your paper. There are many different ways to achieve this. Let's look and see what some of these techniques are. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to learn about more watercolor techniques. Let's get painting. show you four things that we're going to use to leave our whites. First thing is our masking fluid. It can come in a variety of colors, blue, yellow, green, orange. To apply it, you can either use a brush or a dip pen. I mostly use a dip pen unless I want to cover a larger area, which I will use a brush. If you use a brush, be sure to have a specific brush for using masking fluid. If the masking fluid hardens on your bristles, it will damage them. So I put tape on the end of my brush to let me know that this is specifically for my masking fluid. I'll apply it using the brush and the dip pen. Usually when using masking fluid, you do not want it to stay on your paper for very long or it can damage it. A day or two is fine, but if it's on there for weeks, then it will actually lift up your paper. Careful with that. This one gets finer lines, which is why I like it for small spots, for birds or little things that I want to be very precise with. And then just clean off your dip pen. While that is drying, we'll apply our wax. You can either use a white crayon or you can use a candle, like a clear or a white candle. You won't be able to see this one yet until I put paint on it. And this one I will paint color and then we'll lift it out and this one was preserving our whites. So to preserve it, we'll draw this orange and a banana. If you're wanting to preserve your whites without actually using a masking fluid or a wax, you can always go around them. So you want to draw lightly and with little detail because it is white, so you're not going to want to see the pencil marks afterwards. This is ideal for large spaces, like if you have a large area you want kept white, maybe it's a bunch of flowers, a highlight on a person's face. If it's very large, usually it's easier to do it this way. And you just paint around it using the direct method or wet on dry, which I'll leave a card up above. Here you just go around it and you're leaving it all white. Once you have gone completely around it, sometimes you will, after it's dry, add a little shadow or just put a light wash over it because if it's too white everywhere, it'll look like holes. So when it's dry, you can just just a light, light wash in some areas, not all of it, will give it some depth. So to lift out, I'm going to put color here first. I'll show you different colors so you can see how different colors react to being lifted out. I'll start with a red. And then we're gonna go to a blue, to a yellow. We'll have some green in it. And we'll use a brown. Now to lift out is exactly how it sounds. You're just going to be using your brush or a paper towel to lift out your paint color. 
Usually you'll do this when the paint is fairly wet and you just go over it with a damp brush. Using the brush will give you more control. So if you wanted a certain shape or a line like this, that would be the best. Whereas if you use your paper towel, it'll be a larger, softer shape. And I usually use my paper towel to kind of clean up any color that I might need to. You can also do this when your paint is dry. You just have to scrub a lot harder. You can see how it picked up where it was still wet. If you want to pick up where it's dry, I would use a nylon flat brush. Just scrub it. And then blot it out. You can do the same thing with your blue, your yellow, and your brown. Let's see how well that works. See, this red is going to be a little bit more difficult just because it is more of a staining color. So once it's dried, it's kind of on there. Not too bad. Now we're going to paint over top of our wax so you can see what we left behind. I don't use wax too often as you have to leave the wax on there or you have to scrape it with your finger and it becomes very messy. So it's not something I do very often. Let's do a nice blue. So you're just going to put that over and see where we left our crayon. Do the circle and some squigglies and we'll come over here to our masking fluid. Now the masking fluid is still on the paper. We need to wait for it to dry. We can scrub off the masking fluid using either our finger or an eraser. Another way we can use our masking fluid, now that I have paint down, I'm going to use some over on this. If I like this wash, but I need to put another wash on top, you just add more masking fluid to the areas that you like. I like this area. I really like how this color looks, but I need to paint over it. Let's say. I really like how that looks. So I don't want to lose it. So you're going to cover that area, let it dry, and then you can paint over it. Here's our resist. We have our bird, we have our squigglies and our dots. You want to make sure that your paint is fully dry when you are doing this. Otherwise it will smudge back into your white, like right here. If that happens, take your flat nylon brush and just lift out. You can also do the same thing if you need to soften any edges, because you don't always want hard edges. Sometimes you want them soft. And here we're gonna paint over top of some of this where we had put our masking fluid. Say I want to darken up this area, but I really liked that color, so I don't wanna lose it. Tape is another form of a resist, as you see when we use it on our paper to go around the edges. It leaves it white when we're done. So you can actually take off pieces and put it in an area that you want to keep white. If you don't have masking fluid, or if you're too nervous to go around your subject, it looked black, didn't it? It's actually green. And we'll do that. Now we'll again let this dry, and then we'll take off our masking fluid and see what it looks like. Also, just as a side note, when you're drying your paint, don't forget to wipe up any wet paint on the side of your painting, because if you're scrubbing out and it's right there, it will go into it. Also, if you're trying to quickly dry your masking fluid because you need to get moving with your painting, be very careful if you're using a hair dryer. If you get too close to the masking fluid, it'll actually adhere to your painting. I made this mistake when I first started watercolors. You can actually see the color we left behind that I really liked. Not the best design as far as that goes, but it shows you how you can actually leave the color behind that you want. So maybe you're doing a bunch of leaves and you want yellows and greens. You can actually do the light yellows first, then mask out where you want the lighter leaves to be, and then color cover over top of it with darker paint. And then after it's dry, you can lift it up. That way you don't lose those bright highlights that you want and you can also use other colors without muddying your paint. That's it for today's video. 
Our question of the day, what other techniques have you used to leave your whites? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a thumbs up. To watch more tutorials, click up here and for reviews and speed painting, you can click these down here. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when I post a video on how to apply today's techniques in a painting. And until next time, keep on painting!